not a game, it's a lasting. Rage on that beat, going crazy. Hello everyone, welcome back to B Filmmaking. I hope you enjoyed that little sequence. So here's how you can try to replicate a video the same way. So in the last video, you saw me unbox the Sigma 16mm 1.4 and every single shot that you saw in that little sequence was shot from this lens. So the camera that I use for the shoot is the Sony A6400. So neither does the camera nor the lens has image stabilization. Plus there was no stabilization added in post either. So all there was to it, my hands trying to keep the camera as stable as possible as I did those shots. So here are a few tips and tricks that you can use to create something similar. Okay, so the first one is focal length. When you use a wide angle lens, the shake is less obvious compared to when you're using a telephoto. So on a telephoto lens, the slightest of the movements have a lot of impact on the image that you see. While using a wide angle lens, this shake is very minimal and cannot be seen that easily. So the second one is repetition. So whenever you're doing a take, do multiple movements of that same take. So when you're doing that repetition, the movement is much more natural or becomes natural uh, and it's much more smoother compared to when you're trying to control it too much. So try to repeat the same movement over and over again till you feel that it's smooth. And always make sure to preview your footage before you move to the next shot. Okay, just one tip make sure that you keep your one shot in one clip, even if there are multiple repetitions, if that makes sense, yeah. So if you have a pan in shot, when you're doing the repetition of panning in and out and in and out multiple times, keep that in one single shot. Don't end the recording. So that way in post-production, when you pull in your clips, you know that this shot is going to be, or the repetitions of a particular shot are going to be in that one clip. So it makes it much more easier for you to edit your videos. So the next one is focus. So you can either use manual focus or autofocus. Uh, both have their pros and cons. So when you have manual focus, you have much more control over your shot. And when you have the autofocus on, you're depending more on the brains of the camera to get you the perfect shot. So regardless of the fact, use what you are comfortable with. If you're okay with just doing it on autofocus, do it with autofocus. It just takes you a little more time. So the next one is planning your shots. Always have a little bit of a rough idea of what you want to see as shots in that particular sequence or video. So for example, if it's a little video of you making a coffee, always think of the beginning, the middle and the end. So even if it's a little bit of a rough idea, make sure to keep these little shots in your head of what are the shots that are going to be the beginning, what are the shots that are going to be the actual core, and what are the shots that are going to be the end of your video. So always make sure either you write your shots down on a piece of paper or you put them on your phone so that you make sure that you have all the shots and you do not miss anything when it goes to post-production. That way when you're editing your videos you don't feel like oh maybe i could have taken that shot or maybe i could have tried a different camera angle or different movement so always make sure that you write these shots down so that you always have them in front of you and you have all of these choices with you when it comes to post-production so the next tip is less is more always remember having more shots or more takes or more clips doesn't mean it's a better video always think about the music make sure that you follow the beats uh, if there's a shot that requires more emphasis make sure that it's on the screen for a longer period of time sometimes uh, you feel that there are so many good shots that you've taken and you want to portray every single one of them uh, but then at the end when you add everything together uh, and try to add every single shot that you've uh, taken from the shoot 
uh, it ends up being too cluttered. So try to use only the clips or the shots that really, really make sense in that video and make sure not to overdo it so that it doesn't look like too much on the screen. And the last but not the least is imagination. Now, imagination is very, very, very important. Uh, and one thing that I've always seen is that people limit their imagination to their skills. Imagine what you want and then try to learn that skill to achieve it. That is how you can get the best results. For example, if you want an animation in your video for something to jump in and out, and if you don't have those skills, don't limit yourself from thinking that far. Because when you think and imagine something that you cannot do is when you're driven towards learning that particular skill. So always, when it comes to imagination, imagine beyond your skill, beyond your capability. I hope those tips will be useful for you in the future for you to create videos. So if this video helped you, please make sure to like and subscribe and please share it with your friends and family. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram where I post every single day with behind the scenes of how I took that picture. And make sure you click on the bell icon for you to be notified every single time I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next week and continue to be creative.